Hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show. I'm Gary Smith and I'll be taking you through everything Vulcan football for this past weekend. Joined as always by Coach Dunn. And Coach, uh, there used to be a saying in Pittsburgh, Joe said it would. We might need to make you a weatherman. Uh, I'll tell you. Coach Dunn says it would because, again, higher than uh, normal temperatures and beautiful weather this weekend, this past weekend. It looks like beautiful weather this coming. Yeah, weekend, we'll so. take it. You know, usually we get to the end of the season and we're all bundled up out there at practice. And we had shorts on last night at our workout and, and looking forward to getting back out there today. But great weather in Erie. When the schedule comes out and you're playing in Erie in late October, you, you wonder if you're going to be playing in a foot of snow. But great weather on Saturday. Yeah, we're going to have to get you in front of that green screen before, uh, before the end of the season. But, yeah, we talked about it uh, last week's show. Uh, last trip to Mercyhurst was a uh, – a longer than anticipated or expected trip, but this time, beautiful weather. It was about 62, 63 degrees, sunny, perfect weather for football, and your team got off the bus and just uh, business as usual. Yeah, I thought we played really well. You know, I thought I t talked with the team yesterday. I thought offensively, we pr probably played our most complete game. We ran the ball effectively. We threw the ball. We were really balanced. Uh, we broke some big runs and, and, and then had some big pass plays. So was really happy. We overcame some penalties. You know, we had a couple holding calls, and, and any time you get to second and 20, you know, third and 15, th those are hard to overcome. But we executed and played well, and then we played well in the red zone. Um, so thought offensively, very efficient day. Noah Mitchell had a good day. Uh, Malik McGriff and, and Devontae Williams both had good days. Um, you know, and then Jaquay had some – some good plays. So, you know, overall, I thought we spread the ball around well, and, and, and I thought it was an efficient day offensively. And I tell you what, the Mercer Stadium is a very small stadium, and we're media wise, we're literally right on top of the field. So, a lot of times, I don't get a chance as a fan to really see what's going on, but it just seemed like you had their defense on their heels the entire day. Like, I mean, some of the slam patterns, Noah could have probably passed it to five or six different guys. Yeah, we, you know, we were, like I said, we were efficient. You know, I think we scored on every possession in the first half. I wasn't happy with the two minute drill at the end of the half. Uh, we ended up having to settle for a field goal. Uh, but still, anytime you put points on the board was good. I think we scored 30 points in the first half and, and, and scored on each of our possessions. I think we had five possessions. Um, so that was, you know, I, I was pleased with the way we played, but we still got some things we got to clean up. And uh, obviously, you know, we'll talk about it here in a little bit. Going to go against a really good defense this week. And you said, I mean, Jaquay Jackson had, I think, seven or eight catches in the first quarter, had a great game. But Cam Tarrant is the answer to a trivia question. Who's the third Vulcan to throw a touchdown pass in uh, 2022? Cam uh, Tarrant. Just a, a great play. Great yeah. play call and a great time. Yeah, it was a good call by Coach Salisbury right, right at the right spot. We've been working it for a couple weeks, and uh, it, it's based off a reverse we've been running all year. Um, so it was – you know, good execution, Cam. I thought he, from the sideline, my angle, I thought it was an interception because he underthrew it a little bit. So we got to get his arm a little bit stronger <laughs> to keep throwing that deal. But, you know, just overall happy with the way we executed. And not to take anything from Jaquay Jackson, he's an another trivia answer, a uh, wide receiver with another rushing touchdown. I think uh, uh, was keeping the stat guys very busy with, you know, you guys had different guys doing some nose running all over the play. We got people <laughs> the on the offensive side. Offense yeah. A little bit. yeah, that was the same play we had uh, – we had scored at, at Clarion on was was the the loop play to Jaquay and he did a nice job outrunning some guys. We didn't block it exactly right. We kind of had a missed assignment and they were actually pull a guard on it and he fell. And then another guy, you know, but Jaquay was able to get to the corner of the end zone for a big touchdown. Now on the other side of the ball, um, your defense is going against a familiar, although it's been a while, but familiar quarterback Brian also Brooks, formerly of uh, the Vulcans, and uh, the defense. Did a great job keeping him on the run for 60 minutes. Yeah, really was pleased with the way our defense played. I thought we played really, really well. I think we held them to minus seven yards rushing after the, the sack total comes off. Uh, I think they had 237 yards. But the, the thing I talked to our defense about yesterday was, was, was the big play. You know, if we take the two big plays out that we give up, we hold them to, I think, to 127 yards. Um, we've got to stop giving up explosive plays. Now, give Mercy Hurst credit. The kid made a nice play on the ball, and then the, the screen they had set up really nice. You know, you, you, we coach on that to, to do a better job of, of our angles and our tackling and, and things like that. But I thought the defense was dominant all day. You know, when you take those two big plays out of the game, you know, we give up six points in the second half, and, and that's really it. And uh, the third and uh, sometimes often overlooked part of the team's special teams, uh, solid again, a blocked extra point, and uh, – Punt game was solid, even though didn't, I was a little worried at halftime. I didn't know if the punter made it on the, the, the bus because didn't see him at all the oh, first half. Yeah, yeah. Um, but a couple field goals, and that's not an easy place to kick. With no, the that, win, that win was something. Uh, but, yeah, 
I thought our special teams won the day. Uh, you know, I, I would say two weeks ago, we really challenged our guys special teams week this this or special teams wise this week. You know, Gerald Brown was the one that blocked the kick, made a nice play, and, and, and skimmed the gap there and blocked the kick, which was a, a big kick at that moment because we had missed an extra point because of the wind. Um, so I thought that was good. I thought our, our punt team was good. Kickoff team, we started a little slow, but then I think we pinned them inside the 20 a few times. So special teams overall, Cam Tarrant made great decisions in our punt return game. We got some positive yards there. So special teams, I thought, had probably one of our best days special teams-wise. And him returning uh, punts in that win, that's, you know, a uh you're sitting there. It's not going to show up on the stat sheets, but making that the the right choice to either catch or let it bounce because you can. It's hard to tell on the the broadcast just how windy it was. I mean, it was a swirling yeah. wind. It's an eerie wind, even though it was a warm wind for this time of year, but right. it still was sw uh, swirling. Yeah, that that was part of the deal. You know, before the game, we're deciding okay, which way do we want to kick, and and we end up losing the toss. So the, I told the one official, I said he did exactly what I was going to. They deferred, and then they took the win. So we were playing into the wind in the in the first quarter. Um, the second quarter, we, we obviously had it with us, but I, I you know, I just thought it, it was a good day. I thought our guys prepared well. I thought we traveled well. I thought we got off the bus ready to play. You know, first possession offensively, we go straight down and score. You know, which is is deflating when when you defer and kick off, and then you give up a touchdown drive. That's like, well, what, why the heck didn't we take yeah. the ball? You know, uh, but I thought you know. Overall, it was a good day for Vulcan football. When speaking of traveling well, uh, once again, great fan support. It was kind of, they're tailgating pretty well because we looked up at the, the right around the opening kickoff and we're in the booth and like, where is everybody? <laughs> we saw a lot more red and black in the parking lot, but yeah. when they filled in, I mean, it felt like Adamson Stadium North. Yeah, it was it was a good crowd. You know, our parents are doing a tremendous job. We had a couple of alumni up there. It's it's you know, it's great for us when we go on the road. It's it's now again, I'm not disappointed. We're at home the next two weeks. You, you know, towards the end of the year, the travel and the hotels, but. Yeah, great crowd up there in Erie. Well, let's see what the crowd was cheering about this Saturday at Erie, and let's look at the highlights from this past weekend's action at Mercer Harris. When we come back, we'll preview this coming week's opponent, the uh, Gannon Golden Knights. You're watching the Gary Dunn Show right here on CTV. Oh, a handoff to McGriff. They're going to go oh, with the double reverse here. Aaron Terrence going to throw it. It finds Jackson on the near side for a touchdown for the Vulcans. A handoff off to McGriff. He's going to stumble forward. We're breaking it in. Touchdown, Vulcans. Austin Brooks faced the handoff. Looking downfield. Oh, it's going to let it fly downfield. Old, old, and almost not uh, down the sideline and, and in for a touchdown, Lakers. Double end around on the Jackson. Jackson on the far side. I right, dives, gets the pylon. Our screen pass and caught. Right, and he's got a, a lot of room to run. And the Vulcan sent the blitz. He's in the open field. Oh, across the 20 to 10, the five touchdown Lakers. And the Vulcan ends, going to hand it off to a touchdown on Vulcan. And this time, Deontay Williams with it. Er, also Brook drops back, looking for a man. He's going to roll, hold, hold, fires, er, is in the back of the end zone, caught. A uh, touchdown on Lakers. Finds a man and Tarrant and into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans! Two tight end and set. Hands it off to McCann. McCann's going to rumble forward. Touchdown, Vulcans!
Survive the Clowns in Twisted Nightmare 3D. Experience more scares than ever before. Haunted Hills Estate Screen Park. Return September 9th. Get your tickets now at hauntedhillsestate.com. Play fake. Slab, and that's going to be a pick. And there it is. We said something had to give, and now California has a chance to take it. Pick six for the second straight week. Touchdown for the Vulcans. Play action. Slant wide open. Touchdown, Vulcans. Chiquay Jackson. Six on the board for the Vulcans. Pass. Rolls to his right, fires downfield, and it's going to be picked. And that's another interception for the Vulcans. That is Micah Tillman. And here we are, second and goal. Noah goes to his right, throws the back the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans, wide open. Jackson Dottery for the Vulcan touchdown. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. So Anthony Biko, Mr. Reliable, will put three more on the field for the Vulcans. Make it 24 to three. Mitchell, looking left, fires in the flat, passes complete, breaks the tackle, Tarrant at the 10, five, touchdown. California, Cam Tarrant breaks out of everything, and that is gonna be another touchdown for the Vulcans. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. That was highlights from Mercyhurst and also last year's game against Gannon. And Coach, before we look ahead, we're going to look, finish up uh, this past weekend's action. Let's look at the scoreboard from the PSAC. Uh, we talked about Kyle Mercyhurst, 44-20. to um, Biggest game of the year in the conference, or biggest game of the week in the conference this past weekend was IEP Gannon. Gannon winning 43-36 at home over the Crimson Hawks. Uh, Seton Hill. Uh, breaking out for 45 points over Edinburgh, 45-14, then Slippery Rock, 31, and Clary, nothing. And then over in the east, uh, Westchester put up a 50-burger, 58-10. to Quitstown gets by Millersville, 20-13. to Shepard puts up another 50-burger against Bloomsburg, 55-10. to And East Stroudsburg gets by a ship, 23-16. Uh, to If we take a real quick look at the PSAC standings over in the east, Shepard in control like normal in the west. Um, three teams at 5-1, Cal 4-2, and, and a lot to play for this weekend, and, and you know, despite being a game behind, you know, this this game this weekend is a very big game for both Kyle and Gannon. Gannon has yeah. a chance to – it's an outside shot to reach the PSAC title game, but their playoff hopes are a lot in line, and it's going to be a – Yeah, Gannon's playing really, really good football. A uh, huge win for them against IUP. Really good football game. I think it ended up being 43-36. to 36. Mm -hmm. um, You know, a lot of big plays in that game, but they're playing really well. You know, I, I, they kind of – Offensively, they're very balanced. You know, they run for over 100 yards each week. They got two tailbacks that are a little bit different. They're both really good players. They got some explosive receivers, and they got a big quarterback that's doing a nice job. Uh, you flip it over to defense. They run a little bit def different defense, similar to Mercy Hurst. I told the guys yesterday, similar to Mercy Hurst, but totally different. <laughs> okay. And they all started laughing. They're they're an odd front. Uh, they're really good up front. Everything really starts for them up front. They're athletic in the secondary. Uh, they bring a lot of pressure. They're they're doing a really nice job. They, you know, they're not seven and two by by accident. They've won. You know, they've won some games. I think they've gotten better each week. You know, they early they lost a couple, but I think they've gotten better each week. They got a lot of confidence right now, and and, and they're going to come in here ready to play. So we got. I told our guys we got to match their energy. And we were in the press box talking about uh, just you know BSing about football. We're talking with the Mercer's people. You know, they said that quarterback is is something special and a difference maker. Yeah, he's he's had a tremendous year. He's a big kid. He can run a little bit. You know, he's not fast, but he's elusive. Uh, he's hard to bring down, and, and he is really throwing the ball well, and they got some weapons on the outside. And that's going to be this Saturday at noon at Adamson Stadium. And, Coach, um, is as a coaching staff and as a team, or I guess not as a team, team playing, whatever, but as a coaching staff, I mean, is it – is it more desirable to play a team after a huge win coming in here, or is it desirable a huge <laughs> loss? Doesn't matter. Yeah, but I, could, I don't think okay. it really matters. You know, I, I, their coaches are doing a tremendous job, and I'm sure they'll have them ready to play. 
you know, it's one of those deals where in this league, you got to line up every week, you know, and, and we talked about Seton Hill, you know, we had a tough game up there a couple years or a couple weeks ago, and then they go out and, and explode, you know, each week it's, it's a different week, you know, what last week has really no bearing on what's going to occur this week, you know, it, it's just, you got to be ready to play and you got to, for, for us, it's about our preparation. We got to have a great week of practice. Their defense is a little bit different, so we got to make sure we're playing assignment football. And then, you know, defensively for us, we got to eliminate explosive play. That's kind of been our bugaboo all year is, is giving up big plays because when our defense is rolling, they're really good. But when we give up a big play, it kind of tends to, t tends to obviously lead, lead to bad things. So, you know, it's going to be a good football game, and I'm excited for it. And this time of year, is it, I mean, practice and prep, is it, same as it was week one, or is, is it a chance to maybe get some guys healthy or, or back off? Yeah, or? we've we've cut it back a little bit. You know, I was talking with one of our freshmen this morning. You know, it's a grind. You know, I, I don't think I, I think I figured it out. It was eighty some days since I had a day off, um, and a, and the players feel that. So you can't practice the same early in the season as you do late in the season. So we kind of back off. We cut it a little bit. Uh, you know, today we're going to compete a little bit at practice. Um, you know, we didn't last week just because some of the weather last week, and and we had some guys banged up, but. You know, we're going to compete today to start practice out and kind of get them rolling. But we do have cut practice back, maybe a little less contact than you do, you know, at the beginning of the year. You know, so it's, it's you got to find that balance where you're getting really, you're working smart. And we kind of mentioned a little bit uh, at the top of the show about, you know, last two weeks of the regular season at home. Mentally, that's got to be great knowing that you don't have to worry about buses, don't have to worry about hotels, don't have to worry about where you're going to eat, when you're going to eat. You know, you're at home, can kind of relax a little bit and just know, that you know all that external stuff is going away for the last two weeks. Absolutely, it's it's great to be at home. You know, for our guys that you know get up and, and go to class in the morning, and then we lift two days a week. Then we practice, you know, every day, but but Sunday or Saturday and Sunday. Sunday's their day off, but you know they got to go to treatments with our athletic trainer. So it's a grind for those guys. So a, a chance to play at home and and you know really go out and finish the season strong is is what we're looking forward to. And we're looking forward to seeing a lot of. Red and black in the stands this Saturday. Weather looks about 70 degrees. Like I said, Coach Dunn said it would uh, right at high noon. Um, we got to get people in the stands over the tailgate. So set your clocks 15 <laughs> minutes ahead. There you go. And then 2 in the morning, set it back an hour. Sunday's going to be rough for everybody. Yeah. But, you know, get in the stadium. Sunday's a day of rest. So. <laughs> That's true. Right. That's so. true. Um, before we go, we're going to look at the rest of the schedule in the PSAC. Uh, in the West, Cal, again, as we talked about, Edinburgh tra travels to Slippy Rock. Clarion travels to IEP. Mercer's travels to Seton Hill and over in the east. Westchester traveling to Kutztown. Shippensburg traveling to Lock Haven. Shepard traveling to East Stroudsburg. And Millersville traveling to Bloomsburg. But once again, high noon on Saturday, a big game. Um, like I said, get in the stadium about 11, 11.40. You know, get your seats. There you go. Uh, see the coin toss, see the band, see uh, everybody come out. But uh, it's a huge game. Um, come on out. Like I said, weather looks good. Any last words to get people into the stadium? Yeah, just, you know, we're a fun team to watch. Come on up and, and enjoy the tailgate, but get in the stadium early. And, and you know, it's going to be a great day. Pretty soon here, we're going to all be inside for the winter. So what a great day to get outside and enjoy some fall uh, some fall weather. And I know I might uh, get there early and take a lap around. I didn't get to take, take a chance, uh, get a chance to take a lap around the tailgate for homecoming, but it uh, looked like the, the food selections in the uh, parking lot this year are great. So, but come on out. If you can't be there, if you get a note from the doctors or just can't make it, uh, CUTV has you covered on the CUTV Sports 1 on YouTube and the PSAC app. So for Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. We'll see you next week. You're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV.